Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. Hey guys, it's Eric G, and we've got four amazing segments with four different guests. You might have seen him on Dr. Phil recently, Talking the Trades, or you've seen him on YouTube or LinkedIn. We have Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber. We also have the founder of Skylift Hardware for your next patio cover project. And we also have Chris Berry, my friend, the Idaho painter, for all of your exterior painting tips. If you want to find out more about us, here at Around the House, head over to AroundTheHouseOnline.com for all the podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and the television show. Today, we start out the show with Easy Lawn Care with Craig Elworthy from Lawn Bright and how you can easily have the greenest lawn in the neighborhood. Let's check it out. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know, but we've got you covered. This is Around the House. When it comes to lawn care, there's a ton of science that gets included in making sure you got the greenest and healthiest lawn out there. And one of my go-to guys is Craig Elworthy from Lawn Bright. Welcome to Around the House, brother. Yeah, Eric, thanks for, thanks for having me out again. It's great to be here. Great to see you. And you guys have got this amazing service, which really walks people through how to get the greenest and healthiest lawn. Yep, we do. We do. And it actually, it all starts with, with a soil test. So we are very much uh, in the camp of knowing what's in your soil, knowing what's underneath uh, the lawn is, is the, the key uh, to actually having and establishing a group and healthy turf stand. So yeah, we, we walk them all the way through. All our products are um, all liquid and you really just need a hose uh, to just spray on the application when you deliver uh, during our temporary season. Man, that is great. And I noticed got a lot of organic stuff going as well we do yeah a lot of our a, a lot of our products are omri certified so you can use them on your props all of our products are natural uh, so there's no harsh chemicals and we may be ingredient problems where we are not going to use anything where your kids and your pets aren't safe to go on the lawn really immediately right after the, the treatment Man, that is great. And uh, you guys are really growing each and every year. I jumped on your website since the last time we talked and you have so many more things for everything outside. Yeah, we added, we added a, a few products actually in the last year. And really it, a lot of it's due out of customer requests. A lot of people are asking, do you have grass seed? Do you have something for this? Do you have some for ticks and mosquitoes? In previous years, the answer was them, right? But we've looked into it. We took the approach, can we do this? and still maintain our core beliefs, right? Can we do this naturally? And the answer with a lot of the products we added was, was yes, we certainly can. I noticed a lot of people out there right now that are paying for lawn services. They pay for the X plan, and I'm just gonna make up a, a name right there, but they come out, somebody rolls out, they, there's no soil test done, they pull out a real hose, they go over, they spray the lawn, or they apply something. And then you see them next month or next quarter. You guys have really based this on the science and have got your own DIY lawn care program, which to me seems a lot more science-based than uh, some of the subscription models that you see where people are showing up on your door each week. Yeah, and, and that was a big part of it too. We wanted to make sure that certainly it needed to all be you know, safe um, for people to use, but you also need to get results as well. So. We did, we, we were focused on making sure that um, you would soil test kit and you knew what was going on in your soil. But then we also found that a lot of people were you know, very comfortable with the idea of doing this themselves as long as they had the right guidance, right? So they didn't really know anything right about beef thatching or when the right time was to do it or when the right time is to irrigate, how long. So our platform that we've created helps in, in, in proactively guides them through these steps so that they don't really need to be paying thousands of dollars for a lawn care service to come and do all of this stuff themselves, where 
they're putting down God knows what on the law and telling me not to want for a day. You can do this yourself and not that hard. That's what we've really tapped into is people are completely accepting that, that it's easy for them to do and it's actually, you can get better results doing it yourself. So if Craig, if somebody wanted to sign up for this with you guys, what's the process? How does that work? Yeah. So you just, you go to our website, getlawbright.com. You start right at the top of the homepage. There's a quiz and it just asks you three or four simple questions about what you volunteer routine, ask you rate your lawn, where you live. You have to guess about your approximate lawn size. So you can use a um, calculator there on our site where you can just draw a little area on your lawn to do it on it and get your exact your, uh, location. And then you can just select your package right there. You can choose whether you want free immersion or whether you want grassy included with that package. Uh, and, and you can just purchase it right there. And within uh, a few days, your uh, all products will be there along with your soil test kit. Nice. And what is that soil test kit for people that don't understand really what's going on with soil testing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't mean to make it sound too extreme or elaborate. It's really just a, a manner, right? It comes in, all you have to do is scoop some dirt into the soil, soil test kit, um, prepaid uh, mailer with the bag that we give you and send it off and put it in your mailbox and it goes off to our lab. And from there, you're going to get about a week later, you're going to get a detailed report with everything that's in your soil, um, you know, 10 to 12 different data points. But then we, we don't just give you that, right? We give you the information associated with it. And we give you how we're going to change your plan and adjust your plan going forward. So you're only going to receive the nutrients that your lawn and your soil actually needs. And then if you do need to do anything, I'll call it drastic, right? Where you are, you, we see the pH is you know, off in one direction or the other. And we're going to say, hey, look, you know, you can spray this stuff all day. But you're really going to get the best benefit of going out and just getting maybe that line for, you know, six or eight dollars at a local store and putting that on there and then using that because that's going to help actually make a lot of the stuff that's locked up in your soil plant available. So that's a really good part of it too is we're not just trying to sell something, sell a service and, you know, give you some props. We're actually giving you the tools that you need to be successful in your lawn regardless of what it is you're trying to do. Yeah, it's funny. And that's a great point because depending on the lawn, you might have a, a big iron deficiency or your pH is way off and you can throw all the nitrogen on it you want. You're just covering up those other problems that are right there screaming at you, but you don't know until you do the test. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. And, and a lot of the times you see this result, but you wouldn't know if your pH locking out the iron you know, take or phosphorus levels, for example, are locking out iron. So we, we do make sure that you have a full picture of what's going on so that you understand it. And in most cases, we can do a lot of this ourselves with just adjusting the products that we're sending you. Man, that makes it easy. That makes it super easy. And you're going to have the best looking lawn out there. Yeah, that's what we try to do. It, it really is the easy button, right? You don't actually have to think about too much. There is a, a, a text, text-based service that we offer as well, which is going to give you real time as your season moves along and as the weather unfolds, it'll give you updates on when to spray your products, when to not spray your products. One of the things I love about this too, is it keeps you from really over fertilizing. And that's some of the problems we see out there when that stuff's ending up on waterways and everything else out there is that sometimes fertilizer isn't the answer. And I like that you guys balance that out. Yeah. And, and actually it's, you're totally right about that. A lot of the times fertilizer isn't the answer, right? Like in, in the spring, for example, your lawn is going to go through a natural flush on its own. You don't really actually need to do much fertilizing to it. Not a lot of people in, in the industry and as a whole is geared towards telling the homeowner that you got to go out in the springtime and buy that big 50 pound bag of, uh, of synthetic fertilizer and go up on the lawn. That's actually really not the best thing to do. You could be microdosing with biostimulants, uh, which is what our plan essentially does and get a much better effect and you could be she you could have a, a much you know less impact on the environment around you right you're not going to have an excess of really good problems nitrogen and phosphorus that are running on us because you, you put on you over apply right even if you're on the dive and times you're over applying and the stuff is running off into the watershed that's great 
Man, that is great, Craig. Thanks for coming on today. We're running out of time. How do people find you guys again? Yeah, again, thanks for having me. I really appreciate being on. Uh, you can find us at getlonbright.com. Thanks, my friend. And guys, here's your answer to a greener and a healthier lawn. Around the house, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. What's up? This is Dixadania. And Satchel from Steel Panther. And you are listening to Around the House with Eric G. Yeah. We love Eric G, and you should too. As people are planning out these outdoor projects, there is a product out there that I have seen that can change how you do that backyard cover. Doug from Skylift. Welcome to Around the House. Thanks, Eric. Glad to be with you. Man, thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. You have come up with something innovative that eliminates a lot of those posts in your back patio up against the house. That's right. We've come up with a Skylit hardware. I'd like to show you how that works. Absolutely. Let's talk about it, brother. So Skylit, after being a contractor for decades, came up with a product that is structural, and the, the sky lift is installed on top of the exterior wall. Typical two by four double top plate. That wall is designed to carry a load down to the foundation. So the sky lift is very structural, and that's the intention of the sky lift is to be a structural element holding up an outdoor living project. When we look at a sky lift, there's three questions that typically come up. One is, Oh, no, you want me to put this through my roof, which actually is very simple to understand roofing. A typical composition roof under this tab right here, one inch up, are the staple or nails holding this shingle down. Somebody's going to take a stiff putty knife, break the seal tab, pull those nails or staples, and then they're going to pull this shingle up and out of the way. You can pull one, two, you're going to slide those out of the way, and then you can access the sheathing to cut a hole and save that plywood. And now you're going to install the sky lift on top of the wall, put the plywood back in, and then use a flashing, flash that sky lift, code approved flashing to the roof and put the shingles back on. It's much easier than it sounds. That's one of those trust me. You're listening to Around the House Show, talking with Doug from Skylift Hardware. Let's get back to the program. Yeah, and that's a lot like what you'd see with a plumbing pipe coming up through there for your vent through the roof. It's a similar type of concept as far as how that seals around it, correct? This is the standard in roofing it for sealing a, a riser or a, this is the principle the Skylift uses. And one of the questions that people ask, where do I cut that hole? Well, let's say... This was a level here, and I would hold the level out of my gutter or my fascia, measure back to the wall, and it's the same measurement up here, and there's my wall. So now I know which shingles to remove. I can cut my opening. Use a level, measure back here, and measurement up here. Then I cut my opening, remove that, install the sky lift. The fasteners come with the sky lifts. Here we're showing our heavy-duty sky lift. We have quite a few other products I can show you in a moment here, but this is the basics of the Skylift, the structural screw holding this down. Here we're showing an optional lateral stabilizer strap right here. This is an optional item, and this can be used for stabilizing the riser if needed. Now, the other question, how tall is the Skylift doing? One wants to consider... When you're building a cover up here and it's there's a covering material, what is the the slope or the this cover? What kind of slope do I need for this cover material? Typical roofing wants a three three inches to twelve inch rise to rub. 
typical roofing shingles for the warranty to apply is a 312 pitch. Therefore, this wants to be a 312 pitch if I'm using, if I want the sky lift close to the roofing, this is an 18 inch sky lift, which puts the beam, bottom of the beam about 12 inches above the roofing. This area under the roof to the top of the wall is six inches or less, and that's pretty much across the country. Now, let's say I open up the roof and oops, I've got to raise this. I can always add another plate on top of this wall to help you. That makes sense, man. That makes sense. And it's super easy. And this just eliminates having to put those crazy posts up against the, the edge of the soffit and put them right in the middle of your living space right there. That's true. And other things that people try to do is they'll come up with attachments through the roofing. But once you put a bolt through your roofing, you've voided your roofing warranty. Yeah, and you've just created a freeway for water at that point. That's right. Eventually, that can leak. With the sky lift, you're using a a roof flashing designed for penetrating the roofing, and, and you do not void your roofing warranty using a roof flashing. Your 30 year roof is still a 30 year roof when you're done putting the sky lifts in. So, Doug, how many of those do you need across on a typical on a typical patio cover that you're building out there? How how far apart do you typically put those? We might typically recommend every eight foot on center, with a minimum of a four by eight beam, because we know a four by eight beam will span eight foot day in and day out, with no deflection, and and that's got a lot of structural value. The other thing someone has to consider is depending where they're located. What is their snow load? Because the snow load contributes to additional weight. Each sky lift is rated for 2,500 pounds. But the snow load is greater than what the sky lifts can carry. You need to add additional sky lifts for that additional load. It's a mathematic equation, a principle. We always recommend somebody consult with your local engineer, contractor, lumberyard to get get specifics on the structure elements of the project. Perfect. That's where that planning comes in. And uh, anytime you're building a big cover like that, many times you got to be pulling those permits anyway. So that engineer stamp is what you're going to want anyway. And this is just the easy button because it's something that's already ready to go for. Engineers and architects recommend our product. We've had building officials under the radar and our product. We like that. We have several products to help the consumer determine which is the best option to go. That is awesome. So you've got basically something there for every situation, whoever's building that that new patio cover. That's it. We've got our 12-inch designer risers. We call these designer risers. This product is structurally capable of supporting a vertical wood post. Most people will stick a beam right in here, and that puts it being within six inches of the roof. They like this product. It's our standard duty. It's an inch and a half riser. Got four fasteners holding this down. And then we have our 18, 24s. We have 30 and 30. These can be trimmed. We don't encourage that, but people do trim these risers down. Got it. That makes sense. So I guess the million dollar question is for these people out there, how do people find these? You can check with your local lumberyard. It's Around the House Show's largest giveaway yet. We have teamed up with Power Equipment Direct and Genton to give away the latest in generator safety technology. The grand prize is a Westinghouse 15,000 watt electric start portable generator with a Gentent XL Extreme NFPA rated generator tent. There will also be three second prize winners that will win a Gen 10 safety canopy and four third place winners win a Gen 10 signature t-shirt. Head to aroundthehouseonline.com for a link to the contest so you can answer the seven quick safety questions to win. Contest runs from June 1st, 2024 to July 3rd, 2024. See the link for all the contest rules and conditions at aroundthehouseonline.com. Skylifts can be ordered online. Skylifts can be obtained through your local roofing supply dealer. Skylifts are recognized throughout the Northwest as a, an above-the-roof attack patio covers and outdoor living projects. Doug, thanks for coming on today, man. I really appreciate it. I love what you're doing here. This is such a smart way for building that patio cover. I love it. Thank you, Eric. Around the house, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
it's Eric G from Around the House. Are you tired of low quality water in your home? Do you have bad tasting water? How about chemicals, minerals, and a hard water scale tearing up your bathrooms, appliances, and your water heater? I have a great solution for you. It's time you stop the damage and check out King Water Filtration. This water treatment system takes care of every drop of water that comes into your home. It uses no salt, no expense filters to change, and it's made right here in the USA. Plus, it prevents hard water scale. To find out more information, head to kingwaterfiltration.com. And if you use promo code ERIC-23, it will give you $1,000 off MSRP with a discount on a filter that will resolve those water quality issues. Don't miss out on this amazing sale on a product made right here in the USA at kingwaterfiltration.com. That's kingwaterfiltration.com. And don't forget promo code ERIC-23. Hey, this is Ron Keel, the Metal Cowboy from Keel, the Ron Keel Band and Steeler. We are rocking around the house with Eric G. Raise your fist. When it comes to plumbing, one of my greatest friends is the number one expert in the country. Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber. Welcome back to Around the House, my friend. Brother Eric, how are you doing, man? Man, good to see you're doing well, and you made it through your storms over there, and you're in your studio number four or whatever it is just to get on the show today. I appreciate the effort. I'm, I'm glad we were able to make this work. Thanks, man. I wanted to ask you, there's such confusion out in the marketplace for homeowners and even contractors out there about just using the right plumbing fittings for the project, because so many people walk into the home improvement store and go, okay, that will work. And they really don't know the application. Mm -hmm. What are your lines for them? Well, and here's what I like to tell people is is I like to put in what was there most of the time. Now, if it's it's a water leak, something like that, say y'all have a big freeze. Say it gets down colder than it's ever gotten, longer than it's ever gotten. And you're like, look, I need to put this together right now just to stop a flood or to get water back on for this family so I can go help somebody else. I understand using temporary fittings. And I think that a lot of these fittings are temporary. If you can put it on and take it back off, to me, it's a temporary fitting. If you can cut it apart and reuse it, it's a temporary fitting. But me, I look at, I love a solder joint. I love a braze joint. I love putting something together that I know is going to last. It's never going to be a problem. I'm never going to have to come back to it. And I see people put these fittings, push to connect fittings, things like that together in areas they're never going to be able to get back to. And I'm like, guys, that's just not the right thing to do. Especially when there's like O-rings and things that eventually are going to dry out and fail. And then you've got a hidden water leak. And and the, the EPDM is what a lot of these are made of, which is great. But I've worked in industrial plants where we've had to come back and change those because they do fail. And then my, the other thing is that the stainless steel, the, the, the pressure to squeeze it, or when you push it together, the, the teeth lock in and movement over the time is going to make that loosen up and possibly leak. Yeah, I've had them come off of uh, CPVC before and create tens of thousands of dollars of damage on job sites where they thought it was the right thing to do. And that was a licensed plumber that did it. Said, I'm going from CPVC to a PEX product. It was installed correctly. It just slid right off the pipe and didn't grab a hold of that plastic. And I've seen that. The ones that really scare me, and Eric, I talk to a lot of plumbers every day. I've got plumbers that reach out to me and tell me their plumbing company will not let them make a solder joint. Any, they're not even allowed to have a torch on their truck. And I'm like, are you joking? But that's the way they're being taught nowadays. Push to connect, expansion fittings, PEX press fittings. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. And I think a lot of these companies are doing it because it's pretty easy. You could train a third grader how to push together those fittings. Snap lock puzzle. So they're doing that and they're tra- training them to do that. And then they're cutting them loose out on the job. And that's all they know how to do. It's scary to me. You opened my eyes up when you did your test pressure tests on these fittings. And some things that I thought would be number one weren't. Of course, the solder joint 
just crushed it like you'd expect it to. Even some of the press connected fittings, I was like, oh, that didn't do as well as I thought it would. Yeah, and, and it's interesting to see. And it, they tend to do different on different materials. Mm-hmm. Some of them may hold up pretty well on the copper. Some of them may hold up better on the pegs. But the good thing about it is, and, and remember, the, the pressures that we were blowing apart at were way over what True. you're ever going to have on, on city water. And we know that. And, and that's a lot of things that a lot of plumbers complain about. They're like, Roger, the, the pressure is never going to reach that level. Okay. At the end of the day, I want my plumbing built with the very best product. And and to me, the the one that holds the most pressure that I know I'm not going to have to worry about if it's installed properly is copper line with a solder joint or a braze joint. And we don't braze that often. When we went and tested the, the last test we did, we tested a braze joint versus a copper joint or a solder joint. And the copper busted on both of them. We couldn't even get the joints to blow apart. So that's telling me, look, that this works pretty well. Yeah. And you know something, I think that does tell a story though, because what fails first, whatever fails first typically is going to be the weaker the connections. And you were doing these in a perfect situation. It wasn't in some weird off angle that you usually see in construction, right? Where you're just... I got enough to make this work to get this in there. And you're hoping you got this. You can't even get a mirror back behind that fitting. But you're like, ah, my experience is I got this soldered in correctly. But you had a perfect situation. And so it tells you what's the stronger of those. I think it still tells a great story of what's the best to use. And we, we built that. It's a stainless steel blast chamber. We drilled a hole in it to make the penetration and put a bulkhead fitting in. So we can attach pretty much any assembly that we want to that. And I think we built it about 18 inches by 24 inches. We put a half inch thick acrylic lid on it, which is good because we've blown some stuff up in there. And I like it because we've got a gauge on the hydrostatic pump. We also installed a digital gauge on the hose coming in so we can double check our our numbers to make sure things are right. And it is. It's a safe environment. We didn't just put it in there and say, look, let's blow it up and see if anybody gets hurt. And then we'll find out how to protect people. So it it is. It's a good installation. And it is just testing what we're trying to test. Everything else we've got put together with stainless steel threaded joints. We we know that's never going to rupture. We've got a a 10,000 PSI hydrostatic pump and hose on that. So we've got a safe facility and and apparatus to do the testing in. You're listening to Around the House Show featuring Roger Wakefield, the expert plumber. Now let's get back to the program. Yeah, that makes sense. I do have one more question before we go, and this comes to more of that drain waste vent stuff. Which do you prefer? Do you like the ABS or are you more of a PVC person? What's funny is I think it depends on what part of the country you're in. In Texas, I I grew up on PVC. I, I I remember when PVC first came in, it was the early 80s when we started using it here in Garland. And they were still making us put cast iron underground. And I remember one of the inspectors telling me, he says, Garland will never use PVC. And it wasn't but a few years later, and and they are using it. And I guess they said they'd never use it underground. But now we're seeing so many areas where we're going under houses and replacing cast iron pipe. And that's one of the few times, Eric, that I go in with a different product now. I don't, if I go in to replace cast iron, I go in now and replace it with PVC just because we know that the the life expectancy is so much more. And especially if we go in and do a complete repop, we want to try and bring the PVC up through the slab if it's possible. And if the homeowners are like, look, we don't want you to come to the house and open up the wall or anything like that. We'll just literally cut it off. We'll come a couple inches below the slab, cut it off attached to it with a shear band, and then we'll put anchors in. We'll put a standoff clamp on it and, and clamp it down. That way we know it's not going anywhere. And I said a standoff. We'll do a riser clamp and then pull two anchors and secure it to the slab. That way man, we, we don't have any problems. I know that doesn't answer the ABS versus PVC, but I've only found two houses in Dallas in 44 years of plumbing that had ABS. And it was hard for me to get parts to fix them, but we were able to do it. 
Yeah, out on the West Coast, we are a huge ABS community out here as far as what we see, but fittings are so much, and the pipe is so expensive compared to what it was a couple of years ago. So I think a lot of plumbers now are going, that PVC fittings are a third of the price. So I think that's been another thing that people are starting to look at when it comes to job cost. And it's just like the push to connect fittings. When you're paying all that money for a single fitting, I get it for temporary, but if you're going to knock out a big project, cost plays a part of this. And, and think about it too, Eric, it's not just the cost of the fitting. That's where the push to connect fitting makes sense. If I can take two pieces of pot that are prepped and ready to go, and I can put a fitting and boom, press it together, and that takes me five seconds, or I can flux it up, flux up my fitting, put it together, take a torch, heat it up, solder it. The labor is going to take, say it's three minutes, say it's five minutes, anywhere between that. That's where the push to connect starts to make sense. That's where PEX has done really well. With yeah. expansion tools, you can put them together faster than you can make a solder joint. So where you're maybe spending just a little bit more on the materials now, you're spending quite a bit less on labor, and that's what makes it all worthwhile. Man, that makes sense, Roger. Thanks for coming on the show today, brother. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you and get all your great information? Man, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. Of course, they can go to YouTube and search plumbing, or if they're in the trades and they want to find out how to get better at either getting in, becoming a better tradesman, starting their own business, or growing their own business, we are releasing the Wakefield app. So they can go to www.wakefield.app and check it out for free. It is a great app, Roger. And thanks for coming on the show today, man. I really appreciate it. Can't wait till next time. Thank you, Eric. Round the house. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. There is one guy I've been following for a number of years, and he's even in the Pacific Northwest. Chris Berry, the Idaho painter, Paint Life. Welcome to Around the House Northwest, my friend. Oh, man, I'm glad to be here. This is awesome. So um, I'm glad to talk to you. I love to talk to you. Thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks for taking the time. You have been educating people in the trades, homeowners for a number of years out there. I really appreciate what you're doing and showing the right way to do things. Yeah, I've been um, now on YouTube teaching and educating probably for 12 years now. I've got a channel, Paint Life TV, and teaching do-it-yourselfers and professional painters for um, many years and absolutely love what I do, love teaching and educating and helping people get their painting projects done a lot faster and a lot easier, really. So, yeah, that's super cool. And then yeah. I got to ask you, you know, we're coming into spring right now and, you know, the weather's sketchy every other day, it seems, because that's just the way it is in the spring. You got some great tips out there for people thinking about those exterior house painting projects, because I know everybody's itching to get outside and get some color out. Yeah, you know, it is. Um, we've been bunched up inside as professional painters, you know, doing the interior repaints, um, you know, all winter long. So it's been snow and it's been crazy. And now we're all excited to get outside. And I do got some you know, simple tips and tricks when it comes to um, exterior painting. And, you know, one of them, if you're a do-it-yourself or even a professional painter, you know, if you're getting ready to do an exterior, just a, a simple little thing is um, because we are, uh, it is spring now, people are turning on their sprinklers. And a lot of people don't think about this, but, you know, their sprinklers could be hitting the house. And the last thing you want to do is um, paint the exterior of your house and have your sprinklers hitting your house because, you know, water or paint in itself is not, you know, water resistant per se. And it's just going to end up, you know, uh, damaging the paint. It's going to cause the paint to fail a lot faster. It ca could cause blistering and bubbling too. So I think it's something pretty common. We see um, sprinklers hitting houses all the time. So make sure it, do it yourself or have a sprinkler guy come out and check your sprinklers. Make sure they're not hitting the house. And um, for one thing, after you put a fresh coat of paint on it, if the sprinklers hit them right, hit the paint right away, it could get underneath there and could cause um, start causing water damage, dry rot, all kinds of things, all kinds of problems. Another thing is people don't think about is their gutters, gutters and downspouts. You know, if you got clogged gutters, 
um, clogged um, downspouts. They could be overspilling, could be splashing on this on the side of your house. Last thing you want to do is paint your house and have it damaged by water. So if you don't have gutters, you probably should get gutters on your house because it, it does protect the paint. So does protect that house. Oh man, if you don't have gutters, all it has to do is that water comes running off that roof right there on the drip line. And then all of a sudden, all the landscape, bark, dirt, whatever is all up in the front of the house yeah. and that paint doesn't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So th those are, you know, a couple just simple things before you start painting. Another thing, this is um, something that's pretty interesting. Not a lot of people know about this and this is kind of a pretty cool um, little tip or hack there's a product we've been using for years called bug juice and it's an insecticide you just actually add it to the paint and we started using it probably you know 15 years ago or maybe 20 years ago and you know the last thing you want to do is paint your house have it all freshly painted and then you know a year later have um, where all your soffit lights or, or lights are in your house have spider webs and bugs all around those lights you know and it just kind of makes your house look aged you know pretty quick bug juice kills flying and crawling insects you know that will land on your house it'll kill ants it'll kill flies mosquitoes um spiders the product lasts in the paint we've seen it last over five years about five to seven years in your paint it's an absolutely amazing product you just add it to the paint while you're painting and it's going to kill bugs it's absolutely amazing it's an epa um friendly product that you can use inside and outside pretty cool stuff man that is awesome I got to ask you one of the common, I don't know, it's a controversial subject out there. So I'm going to ask it anyway. What do you think of paint and primer in one? You know, that, that's a good question. And that's, um, I think it goes all the way back to uh, Bear Paint. Bear Paint was, I think, the, the first paint to ever create a paint primer in one. And Bear Paint was primarily a do it yourself for paint. And it was do it yourselfers were creating this demand for a paint and primer in one. Um, I think, you know, back then, you know, they're just really, um, it, was and there hasn't been you know really a paint and primer in one i know i've used um you know some recent products nowadays you know that are classified paint and primer in ones um on exterior um you know houses and they are good products but you're never going to you know, have a situation where you really need to prime something and have a paint primer one be better than an actual primer. If you're dealing with bare wood, if you're dealing with, um, you know, substrates that, you know, are failing, primers are always going to be your best bets. Um, you know, if you have a house that is in good sound condition, that doesn't have any scraping bare wood, um, any failing, you know, um, paint on um, chalky surfaces, a paint primer one, you know, can be okay, but as a professional, if there is areas that need to be a primer, I'm not going to be using a paint primer and one as a primer. I'm always going to turn to a primer first and then top coat it with, you know, a lifetime warranty painter that, or a lifetime warranty paint that could be classified as a paint primer and one. Nice, man. That is great advice because, yeah, it's uh, it might cover a little better, but uh, primer is just the way to go. Yeah. It, and you know, I think, too, this is another thing when it comes to um, painting. And, you know, uh, this is a tip you know, for do-it-yourselfers and, you know, professional painters understand this. You know, don't ever try to go um, cheap in paint. You know, paints are classified basically by the year of warranty. So you could have like a five-year warranty, 15-year warranty, 25-year warranty, and a lifetime warranty. You know, almost my entire career, I've always used, used lifetime warranty paints. And there's a reason that you really do get what you pay for. You know, a lifetime warranty paint is it's going to um, be a lot less splatter. You're spraying, it's going to be a lot less overspray. It's going to have superior coverage, which is actually going to, you know, end up paying for itself in the end. And then it's going to actually last longer too. So you're going to have to repaint your house, you know, in, um, you know, less time or more time, should I say, but it's gonna last longer using a lifetime warranty paint. So, you know, the headaches that come with um, inferior paints are just not worth the money. So, you know, if I can, you know, suggest anything, you know, to do it yourself or is, you know, try whatever company you're using, they all have grades of paint. I definitely would use a lifetime warranty paint. Yeah, great advice. My experience in the past as well is, the most expensive mistakes I've made was buying cheap paint because I ended up having to buy more of it to cover and I would have saved the money 
if I'd have just bought a better quality paint and it's going to last longer. When yeah, it- I think that that's the, the, the two things is um, it's so frustrating to have the paint drip and splatter everywhere and cheap, cheap paints um, drip, create splatters everywhere. They're just an absolute headache. But you, like you said, the coverage, you get way better coverage uh, with the life with a lifetime warranty paint. And that just means you're just going to less coats. Typically, you know, um, one of the paints I experimented with this last summer was a product from Bear, and it was their top of the line um, lifetime warranty paint dynasty covered in one coat. It was absolutely amazing. There are certain colors, you know, um, they have in their line that are guaranteed one coat coverage paints. And typically I would say there is no paint on the planet that covers in one coat. I've never, even though they claim they have, but um, that paint I use, it did actually cover in one coat is absolutely amazing. You know, um, you're only as good as your prep. And, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'll start off by talking about caulking itself. And, you know, we caulk a lot of stuff on the exterior of our house. You know, we're gonna be caulking soffit vents, we're gonna be caulking windows, we're gonna be caulking all the nail heads on the house. And, you know, we're typically doing quite a bit of caulking and priming, but caulking, you know, we'll just stick with this topic. Um, caulking is like, you know, um, the paint itself is going to pay for itself. It's going to you know pay for you know the length of um, the product. It's going to last you know for years. A uh, caulking is just like you know if you buy a ten year warranty caulking or a fifteen year warranty caulking, it's probably going to crack. It's not going to split, um, or it's probably it's going to split from the surface. You know, pretty pretty soon and pretty quick. We've seen you know inexpensive caulking um, on houses. You know, we've caulked, you know, crack the next year. So better caulking, we use um, products from Tower, like Tower Tech 2 or Big Stretch. It bonds way better to the two, you know, edges that it's um, it's coming in contact with. It has more flexibility. It stretches more. It doesn't dry out. And in the end, you know, your caulking is sealing your house from water. It's sealing your house from air. It's sealing your house from bugs. And if that caulking fails, you know, even before your paint, within a couple of years, it's just going to let all those um, elements and stuff in your house. So, you know, I always use lifetime warranty caulking and sealants, just like I use lifetime warranty paints. Nice, man. The big stretch is what I switched over to a number of years ago, and that changed the game for caulking. Yeah, it's a game changing sealant. It's, you know, uh, cheap sealants don't work called tool well so they're hard to manipulate they're hard to get a smooth bead they dry too fast i mean big stretch tools amazing and um the capabilities the flex capabilities and the stretch capabilities of it is amazing i've never had big stretch ever fail on a job that i've ever used that i've ever painted before that says a lot brother we're running out of time What's the best way to people to track you down? Because, man, you are educating the world out there in painting. Yeah, you know, I, I love to teach and educate, you know, um, do-it-yourselfers and professional painters. You can find, um, I got 1,700 videos on YouTube about painting. My YouTube channel is Paint Life TV. You can find me teaching and educating on Facebook, Ida, The Idaho Painter, Instagram, Idaho Painter, and TikTok. We do have a store, um, an online store and a retail store in Boise, Idaho. My online store is paintlifesupply.com where we sell all the tools necessary to do all your interior and exterior painting. That's where I get my tools, brother. Thanks for coming on today. I appreciate the wisdom. Oh man, it's been um, awesome being here. I love to teach and educate. I'm Eric G and you've been listening to Around the House. Somewhere unseen and undiscovered is a love song let's be lovers we're all over the radio take my Hey, it's Eric G with Around the House. Are you looking to grow your business? Need a spokesperson for your company? Maybe an MC for an upcoming trade show? Or maybe you want to up your game and shoot some promotional videos? My team of experts would love to chat with you. Head to aroundthehouseonline.com and fill out the contact us form, and we'll set something up. Thanks for listening to Around the House.